So Paula Cortez will tell us about Alma's view of W43. Here. Okay, so everybody can hear me? Okay. So um, I'm very happy to be here. I'm one of the Crutcher students. I see uh, we are four here, so we are not a legion. So we are more like special forces type, so <laughs> very specialized you know, skills. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, it was a, quite an experience when I did my PhD at Illinois with, with Dick. And in fact, I want to say that uh, Dick Crutcher is a very motivational advisor. And, and I want to tell you a story about the kind of motivation that he, he, he gives us to actually finish the, the work. So um, I don't remember if I went to his office or he went to the area where the students were located. I was finishing my fourth year. And he basically, you know, without be, me being able to say anything, he said, you know, the A++ project has been canceled, so you have six months to graduate. <laughs> so you know, that's very good motivation. <laughs> so in the end, I exceeded those six months. And uh, he kept me funded anyway. And I'm forever grateful for that. And in fact, uh, uh, Athol Kemba, who's not here, also helped me a lot because he kept my NCSA duties at the very minimum. So I was able to actually finish. And I'm really grateful for the insight that, uh, and all the, the work that I did with Dick. And I want to start the, the presentation. Um, so this is, let me see. OK. So with this image of BIMA, this is the last CRA configuration before BIMA uh, moving into Karma. And uh, in fact, uh, Joseph already mentioned that, but Dick Crusher was a pivot uh, figure behind doing dust polarization with interferometers. And all the work done with millimeter interferometry started here, started at BIMA. And I think that without his, uh, his push and, 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 and his vision, uh, we would not be where we are now, which is ALMA. And this is going to be the premier instrument now that we got the linear polarization working. We are working on the circular, so stay tuned. Um, and, and hopefully the results that, that, that we are showing today are just a glimpse of what's to come. So today I want to talk about W43. Uh, W43 is a massive, uh, as a high mass star forming region, which is located uh, very close to an, a giant H2 region that, uh, this is the, the laser pointer, yeah, which is more or less located here. This is a cluster of OB and Wolf Riot stars. And uh, when we started doing the polarization with BIMA, we pointed to this guy because it was very bright. So the first BIMA experiments were detection experiments. We were hoping to, 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 to be able to get something. Um, so. The, what I'm showing here is a map, is a, is a map by Frederick Mott. Uh, it's a 1.3 millimeter and 350 micron done with the volumeters. And here is the source detection using, I think, was a Gauss clamp or Gauss fine or whatever the algorithm is called, of all the major condensations on, on this molecular cloud. So I'm going to concentrate on this object, which is W43 MM1, which is the one that we did with BIMA, the SMA, and with ALMA. That guy is actually pretty massive. It's about 3,000 solar masses. So the program that we did with ALMA includes seven sources. So I basically did a small survey of the brightest uh, peaks towards uh, W43. And, um, the paper that I just got accepted two days ago is on, oh, it's on that guy. Yeah. Let me, how can I go back? No. OK. So uh, there's been a lot of work done, done on this guy. So, but what, in, what, what intrigues me, and before going to the polarization, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to know, you know what the gas was actually doing first in this subject. So I, I went, when I was a postdoc, and mapped using APEX and the ASTA telescope, uh, ACN, ACO+, and CS, and this is the spectra. 
And this actually kind of show uh, the blue skew profile that's suggesting of infall in motions. And this is toward the peak of W43M1. And you can see that you, know, you have the blue skewed skew, uh, skew profile here in, in HCO plus. And this is H13CO plus just right in the middle. So that, 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 that was pretty suggesting wind falling. So later I did a small mosaic. I mean, small pointing around it that suggests that this whole thing is actually in falling. And on really large scales, this is about 45 times 45 arc seconds, or about 1.2 parsecs. And, and, and that was quite intriguing. So uh, it was sort of difficult to correlate with, with the magnetic field and the results, the early results that we got with BIMA. And before going into the actual um, BIMA results, uh, I want to use the opportunity to show you how we have advanced in terms of capabilities. So this is the first map towards W43M1 doing with the JCMT in 2000. It just shows two detections. So we went ahead and, and, and did it with BIMA in 2006. That's the whole W43MM1 that you can see there. At that point, uh, what you're seeing is the polarization pattern over the polarized intensity in grade scale and Stokes I are the contours. And we saw, OK, this could be a pinch morphology. So that's quite interesting. So that, that's what we got with BIMA, so then with the SMA, that was done by uh, TK Sridharan. Uh, I'm on that paper. And it wasn't suggestive on our glass morphology, but they also detected strong outflow emission. But more or less, the polarization pattern was consistent with what we, we got with BIMA. So it still was kind of puzzling, uh, given this view of this large scale gas infalling into the main source. So, uh, we waited until ALMA was actually capable of, of doing that sort of observation. So we went ahead. And uh, OK, so this is the Stokes I uh, from the SMA showing the actual layout of the sources. So the Stokes I is, is, is uh, it's, uh, 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 is resolving much better what's going on in W43M1. In fact, you can barely see here these white contours. This is uh, methyl cyanide emission, which suggests a hot core presence uh, in, the, in the main source, which is source A. Uh, there is also detections here and here, though, although it's kind of marginal. So the, the derived temperature for this source is about 400 K. So we suggest that uh, you know, the temperature here is uh, uh, it, it's, it's higher than, than it was anticipated before, and, and this is indeed a problem that, that is difficult, is, is difficult to, to track. Uh, the same was done with, with, with Plateau. I mean, they, they also observe, and they, they more or less the morphologies are consistent. This is uh, one millimeter observations done with Plateau de Burr and over this guy. They did a small mosaic over the whole ridge, but I'm going to concentrate on this guy. So here comes Alma. And this is what we see. These are band six observations done with ALMA over the whole W43MM1 uh, region. This is just a Stokes eye. Uh, the, the filament is completely fragment. And uh, this is source A. We basically run uh, all the source detection algorithms that we were able to find just to make sure that we were getting the right parameters. Um, there is a very nice uh, algorithm that was done for Herschel, which is called Get Sources, was funded just to be used on Herschel data. And, and it's a multi-wavelength uh, source extraction algorithm. So we run that, and we confirm it with other algorithms to derive the, uh, the actual um, uh, source parameters from, from, from all these small cores that you see in the in the image. And 
from this guy, uh, I mean, we obtain polarized emission from, for all these, this region, but this guy apparently seems to be the most massive protostellar core in the galaxy with, with, a, with an upper limit of about 342 solar masses. And still, you know, needs to be confirmed because uh, there is a range of temperature here that, 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 that we used. Um, the range of temperature is between 70K and 150K, which is uh, what is suggested from a, from a SED modeling done by Herpin et al. in 2012. Uh, but, but, but still, the issue of the, of the temperature in these massive protostellar cores is something that needs to be understood uh, better. So you can compare with the SMA image. I mean, it's quite consistent. But the ALMA, the ALMA detail is quite astonishing. So here's the polarization. This is the polarization. I mean, this is the magnetic field pattern that we obtain, assuming grain alignment. The polarization vectors are already rotated. It's quite consistent with the SMA. And it's also um, interesting to analyze. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's clear now that uh, ALMA, the level of, de of detail that ALMA is providing, as also was mentioned by Chad, it's making the, the analysis of polarization data much more challenging. I mean, the simple models that we used to do, I mean, you, the simple calculation that we used to do in the past, and, and I'm doing here, uh, and I did for the letter that we submitted, are no longer sufficient, and in that sense, uh, modeling is going to be quite necessary to really understand what we're seeing at these length scales. So for example, you, you, you see here, this is the, polar, the, the contours are the polarized intensity and the, the, the color scales is to side. You can see here that the polarized intensity is quite compressed. Well, you see, you know, almost a, almost a 90 degree turnover in the magnetic field. I mean, what this means? I don't know. I mean, what I, can, what I can think of is that the field is actually being dragged by gravity. So, so this is, this, this, the, to understand really the implications about how, how the field is behaving in this object, we need modeling. So the field here is quite uniform towards the peak. Also, we don't see emission at the peak of the source, but we see emission toward here. We assume that this, Two are connected, although we don't see we don't see it. But we also see emission toward this sort of a small filament here. Could this be that this part is bound by by the field because it's parallel to the filament? I, I don't know. And we also see emission in this part of the of the map. So then the simple analysis that we did was simply to divide the region in uh, I mean, the, the whole map in four regions, and do a separate analysis trying to estimate the field. And to estimate the field, we use the three flavors that we know of the Chandrasekhar and Fermi technique. The original Chandrasekhar and Fermi technique, which is mostly uh, you know, perturbation of the, of the field lines by a, uh, by a turbulent velocity field. Uh, the the, the um, the refinement by, by, by Heist uh, 2001 and by Faceta and Calves in 2008, which assume different, different uh, um, um, <coughs> uh, behaviors of the field in the, in the sky. So, so we got magnetic fields for the source A between 1 and 4 milligauss. I want to point out the column densities that we are tracing. We are higher than what uh, um, uh, what uh, Dick has been done with the with the Seaman effect. So this more or less the same we got towards that region, and toward those two regions, uh, we're also getting more or less uh, uh, similar results. So with the field, a few milligauss uh, uh, for for each independent region. And I, what I was saying, we are here, which means that in order to really get 
uh, values for the magnetic field, we need SEMA measurements at those densities, which are going to hard to come. I mean, we need tracers. And just to show you, this is more data, some of the other sources. I really have to uh, uh, improve the data reduction. I have just haven't had time. And OK, this is my conclusions. So this is the power of the of Alma polarization, which is also part of the Cratcher legacy. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And I'll take questions. As you can imagine, I like the the idea that the field is being dragged by gravity. But playing that <laughs> playing the devil's advocate, how can you discard other possibilities? I don't know. Okay. But okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> good answer. Okay. That was a good, quick answer. Thank you. Um, 